Feels like a Monday, and so far this show has been exactly like your average suck-ass Monday. But that's okay. We're starting with a new attitude here in the second hour. I want to welcome on into the program Hans von Spakovsky. Hans, always great to have you on. And there's a lot of news that has happened over the last uh, you know week, week and a half or so since I've been gone. Regarding Maine, now first Colorado and now Maine over the last couple of uh, days – working to remove former President Donald Trump from its ballot. So let's talk about Maine and the difference between what Colorado wants to do, which is going through their Supreme Court, and what Maine wants to do, which is basically uh, one woman, the Secretary of State, unilaterally pulling Donald Trump off the ballot. Yeah, and uh, I guess no surprise since she was the head of the ACLU chapter of Maine before she became uh, Secretary of State. Yep. And by the way, I mean, she not only made a wrong decision, she's not even a lawyer, right? Um, but she had a basic ethical issue and conflict of interest because guess what she did in the 2020 election? She was an elector for Joe Biden. And, and now she's acting to take his possible opposition off of the ballot. Um, I should tell you, Dan, uh, just last week, uh, right before Christmas, um, the the Colorado State Republican Committee filed a petition with the U.S. Supreme Court asking the U.S. Supreme Court to take up the Colorado case uh, in an appeal and to overrule the Colorado case. And obviously, if the Supreme Court does that, if they take up the case, if they overrule what Colorado did, that would void what the, the Bain Secretary of State has done. So what do you think the deadline is? I know, is it January 4th, the deadline for Colorado? The Supreme Court has to let Colorado know by the 4th? Well, that's what they put. Yes, that's what they put uh, in their in their order. Um, so I, I think the Supreme Court is going to act pretty darn quickly on whether they want to take this case up or not. I just don't see how they could turn it down. I mean, they could, but that would be, I think, a serious dereliction of of their duty to get this issue resolved because, yeah, Colorado, Maine, uh, the California lieutenant governor sent a letter to the California Secretary of State requesting that she also uh, do this and uh, th- there are cases pending in in a dozen states on this issue now we all i mean hans you and i have spoken about this uh, I, I know that other hosts have spoken about it as well here on wtn i have to assume that people know by now 14th Am- amendment section three is the right. rationale and just for catch up people here on the january 2nd basically what the supreme court can do as you've got all of these states trying to boot Donald Trump off the ballot using the 14th Amendment as their rationale. Supreme Court can just come come up just to review and say any kind of an application utilizing the 14th Amendment is not going to pass legal muster. They can t- just do a blanket statement, correct? That they can, uh, but they can do it based on the fact that if you examine Section 3 of the 14th Amendment carefully, it's clear to me, uh, and frankly, a number of other uh, constitutional um, lawyers, that it doesn't even apply to Donald Trump. So you don't even have to get into the issue of, well, did he commit insurrection? Did he not? Um, by its own terms, it doesn't ap- even apply to him. And so that would be an easy way for the Supreme Court to basically take the case issue an opinion and void all these efforts that are going on across the country. And and Hans von Spakovsky joining us from the Heritage Foundation, our legal analyst on WTN and Nashville's Morning News. So when you say it doesn't apply to Donald Trump, it's because uh, the 14th Amendment, Section 3, applies to appointed uh, officers, if you will, not elected presidents, correct? Yes, it's because the the term it, it applies to what's what's called officers of the United States. And the Supreme Court has said in prior decisions when it was looking at that term as used in the in the Constitution, officers of the United States, 
that that only applies to people who have been appointed, not elected. And what that means is that Merrick Garland, for example, who's the attorney general of the U.S., he is an officer of the U.S. because he was appointed to the position confirmed by the Senate. But Joe Biden, Joe Biden's not an officer of the U.S. because he was elected to that position. There was another attempt in Wisconsin that was dismissed by the Elections Commission there based on what is being called the technicality. Michigan had a similar situation. As we read about all of these attempts sort of falling by the wayside, Hans, will other people in some of these other states bring their own lawsuits, but based on a different application? It kind of feels like we're playing whack-a-mole with all of these different lawsuits. Well, they're going to have they'll have a hard time bringing it on anything else because their only at possible avenue is Section three of the 14th Amendment. And people need to remember, I keep uh, people just especially reporters, they just they just ignore this. Remember, these same groups tried to do this uh, in uh, two years ago. In 2022, they filed almost identical lawsuits against Republican members of Congress saying that uh, uh, members of the House and and U.S. senators like Ron Johnson, Wisconsin, say claiming that they had engaged in insurrection and therefore shouldn't be on the ballot. None of those cases succeeded. Um, They have finally succeeded with the Colorado Supreme Court in a badly, badly uh, reasoned decision. And but remember, it was four to three. Yeah. So three judges said, no, you can't apply this. It was one judge crossing over to the to it was three to three. And you had one judge, basically one judge crossing over to make it a four to three majority. One judge saying, I'm going to make a decision that affects literally tens of millions of voters across the U.S. by taking away their ability to make a decision uh, in this year's presidential election. Hans von Spakovsky from the Heritage Foundation joining us. Hans, Jamie uh, Jamie Raskin uh, said this with Dana Bash over the weekend. He seems incredibly convinced that Colorado is right. Here's what he said, comparing what Trump is accused of to other presidential requirements, like having to be born in this country and being the age of 35. Listen to Jamie Raskin. He has disqualified himself, and we have a number of disqualifications in the Constitution for serving as president. For example, age. I mean, you know, I've got a colleague who's a great young politician, Maxwell Frost. He's 26. He can't run for president. Now, would we say that that's undemocratic? Well, that's the rules of the Constitution. If you don't like the rules of the Constitution, change the Constitution. All right, so what do you say about that, Hans? Jeremy Raskin, he's a member of Congress. Congress acquitted Congress acquitted um, uh, President Trump of engaging in insurrection. So if you take him, if you take his logic that he's tr- supposedly applying, uh, then how is he disqualified? You know, the Congress interpreted the Constitution. They acquitted him in a trial. So he's clearly did not engage in insurrection. And just one congressman claiming he did doesn't change the acquittal that occurred in the U.S. Senate. Well, and and it's not like if I can throw my two cents in there, you you can't debate someone's age or, you know, where they were born. I mean, putting the whole Obama thing aside for a second. But, you know, clearly there is a, a debate. I don't believe as much of a debate going on right now, but there is a debate between, you know, what Donald Trump did, didn't do and so forth. But. To compare, you know, that to these other two just doesn't make any sense. He also, by the way, says, Jamie Raskin uh, also says that he believes that Judge Clarence, Justice Clarence Thomas needs to recuse himself. This is what he said. Anybody looking at this in any kind of dispassionate, reasonable way would say if your wife was involved in the big lie and claiming that Donald Trump had actually won the presidential election had been agitating for that and participating in the events leading up to January 6th that you shouldn't be participating. So in, he should recuse himself. He should. Oh, he absolutely should recuse himself. The question is, what do we do if he doesn't recuse mm-hmm. himself? So he wants he wants Clarence Thomas to recuse himself because his wife, Jenny Thomas, was texting Mark Meadows, Donald Trump, chief of staff, talking about, you know, trying to do something about all of this. And. But 
I mean, I just I think that for Raskin, I think what he's trying to do is stack the against the stack the deck against Donald Trump. Uh, he is, and uh, there's no reason for Thomas to recuse himself. In fact, you can make a much stronger case that Elena Kagan ought to recuse herself, given the fact that she was in the Obama Biden administration. And in fact, uh, they hired her to be the Solicitor General of the U.S., so she actually worked for Joe Biden and uh, President Obama when she was uh, when he was president. So you want to make a case for recusal, uh, you should concentrate on Kagan, who actually worked uh, for for Joe Biden, who will be the candidate who will benefit if Donald Trump is taken off the ballot. Let me let me ask you this in our remaining minute, 45 seconds. I'm reading stories out there and I don't know if they're planted stories by the media, but where they're saying that Donald Trump is. And this is the quote, secretly concerned that the Supreme Court is going to side with Colorado, side with Maine. Are you reading anywhere where there's any legit judges or constitutional scholars out there that are would side aside from Jamie Raskin? They would side with the Democrats on this. Oh well, they they rounded up some academic experts in the Colorado case, um, but when you go into their actual reasoning, it, it it fails. But that doesn't stop. <laughs> you know that that doesn't stop academics these oh, no. days, particularly the way they dominate the leftists dominate the law schools from making claims like that. It is stunning. Uh, Hans von Spakovsky, thank you very much for joining us here on Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.